every once in a while you come across a piece that is absolutely charming. And that happened when I saw this lovely George II period Burr Walnut Low Boy. Now we've talked in the past about Burr Walnut, but this one just has the most magnificent Burr Walnut features to it. It dates from about 1730, and the top is quartered. Now the quartering is when they take one piece of walnut, cut it through the middle and open it out, then open it out the other way so that you get a pattern on the top. And you can see that quite clearly here. And the top is also cross-banded in burr walnut. Burr walnut, from the growth on the side of a tree or at the root base of a tree of walnut, and it's, in itself, it contorts the grain so that you get the most magnificent figuring to the grain. And you can see that clearly here. And it goes all the way through on this. It's a very consistent piece. And it has this lovely moulded edge going around the top. But one of the things that's most charming about this is that normally on a piece like this, you would expect this banding around here to be what we call chevron or feather banding. In this case though, it's got this black and white checker banding going all the way around the top, but also repeated around all the drawers. This is typical of pieces made in either Cheshire or Yorkshire. It seems particular to those areas. And on this one then, we have all the original brass hardware and furniture on there. And it really has the most pleasing colour and grain that is consistent all the way through. And again, on the sides, both the sides, which of course tells us that this was made to be seen from all the angles that it would have stood against a wall. And because it stood against a wall, there's a slight overhang at the back. That's because, of course, standing against the wall, you would have had to have had the top going up to the wall. But of course, you'd have had a skirting board down at floor level, which is why you have the overhang of the top. And it has this lovely shaped frieze here. Again, these are all things that help us to date it. And now I'm going to show you something quite extraordinary. I very often say to people, you can tell as much from looking underneath a piece as you can from looking at the top of the piece. Here we've got, and you can see the discoloration going all the way around, which is where over what is now nearly 300 years, people have picked this up and the greasy spores from their fingers have rubbed off onto these surfaces. So that's absolutely what one would expect to see. Also, if you look at the block work behind all the legs, that is exactly what one would like to see. And then here we've got this, which is the dust board separating the two small drawers at the top from the one larger drawer that we've taken out to show this, which is just made up of pieces of pine glued together. And that's never seen the light of day. But what is very interesting is to see the cabriole legs and the way that they're made. Because you'll see that each one of these has a hole in the middle. And many people, when they look at that, would say, ah, yes, well, it must have had screw-in casters originally, but that's not right. The reason the legs have got a hole there is because the legs were turned by a turner on a lathe. So to get a cabriole leg like this, what you would have had is a large block of walnut that would have been put on a pole lathe so that the turner could turn it down to a column, to a circular column, which could then be spoke-shaved and rubbed down to produce exactly this cabriole leg. If you put a piece of timber onto a lathe, you have to screw it in at both ends so that when the lathe goes round, the wood turns with it. Pole lathe would be operated by a turner sitting there with a treadle 
and a piece of rope coming up or twine coming up onto the lathe and then going up to a pole secured to the roof or ceiling so that as he pressed down on the treadle the column would rotate one way and as he took his foot off the treadle the bent pole on the roof would pull it back up again so it would then reverse and go back spinning the other way and that's how these legs were turned and as I say once turned to a column it could then be for the cabinet maker to shave them down to the shape that he wanted and this is exactly right on what we look for on the underside of a piece like this so there you have it a lovely George second period burr walnut and figured walnut low boy in beautiful and very very original condition many thanks for watching this video i do hope you enjoyed it i would like to invite you to subscribe to my newsletter which is brimming with my latest acquisitions detailed histories and footage of pieces not yet on display on my website the link to my newsletter is directly below this video until the next time